This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi, it's Kiffin Levates here and video two in a series on decentralization and centralization. And in the previous video, I tried to explain a bit about why markets are centralized, not from an economic perspective, but from a social perspective. And obviously I didn't do as good a job with that as I'd hoped to because of some of the comments that I received. So I thought it was worth digging into this a bit more. Now, there's a natural tendency in human societies to move towards centralization. Uh, the first is based on social and community aspects that pushes you into this, namely the sense of belonging that you get from being in a community and the security and the stability and predictability that belonging to a particular group or particular society affords you. And a second part of that is the efficiencies that it uh, provides. The fact is that if something is familiar and nearby, then it's going to be cheaper than if you have to learn new stuff all the time and travel in order to reach it, either in a uh, virtual sense or a real sense, because in a sense, browsing the web is a form of travel. And then there's also a pull because there are some people among us who desire power for power's sake, and often they end up becoming leaders of these communities or these societies, ultimately for the detriment of all of us. So that's kind of the human drive towards centralization. On the flip side, there is the desire to be free of censorship and free of control. And that's kind of the balancing force. And I think we tend to swing more towards the centralization, the convenience and predictability, than we do towards the importance of freedom and of uh, avoiding censorship. So that was kind of the point that I was trying to set up in the previous video. And uh, I don't think I did a brilliant job of it. So hopefully this explains a bit more. And that allows me now to go on to the next thing, which is um, the problem I see with the way that decentralization is going. People point out that decentralization has the capacity to give you control over your assets and over your data in a way that you don't have in traditional society. So if we take, for example, crypto assets, as long as the network is running, then uh, it's very hard for a government or a central authority to take your assets off you. Um, ultimately, they would have to resort to either closing down all the on and off ramps, which wouldn't matter if the on and off ramps were no longer relevant and everything was hermetically contained within a cryptocurrency system, or they would have to resort to what is known as uh, rubber hose brute forcing, which is effectively torturing you or threatening you in order to get you to give up your private keys and thereby be able to seize your digital assets. So in that sense, cryptocurrencies are liberating and freeing. They uh, remove the possibility of censorship, but of course, around the boundaries, there are the possibilities for centralists to uh, still have control. And I think that is one side of the problem that I'm trying to address here with the fact that decentralization isn't a magic silver bullet that's going to cure everything um, and fix all the problems with censorship and centralized control. And then the second part of that is that people just like, on the whole, as long as they aren't suffering, to be in a centralized system for precisely the reasons I gave before. We see that in society that uh, we give up freedoms when we're fearful. So there's a terrorist attack, emergency uh, powers are invoked and people go along with it because they live in fear. So, uh, and there are plenty of quotes out there that you can find on the web of where people are sort of saying that this human, this natural human trait uh, is to our detriment, that we are too ready to give up our independence and our freedom in search of security. And the result of that is that we end up with neither. Anyway, so those are the kind of things that I was alluding to in the previous video. And this is the worry I have about uh, decentralization, which is it doesn't matter if you are in complete control of your data and your assets, if you have nowhere to exercise that control. And when you look at the way that uh, Web3 is going, we're seeing the same central parties 
uh, springing up and dominating the space because people naturally gravitate towards them. And the fact that the underlying assets that we're talking about, NFTs or cryptocurrency, are under your full control is all great and good. But ultimately, if you have to operate through one of these centralized portals or you are somehow pushed into or compelled to use one of these centralized portals in order to um, interact with others in the community, then it doesn't really matter if the, these underlying assets are under your complete control because you're still having to go through the gateway that these services provide. And uh, I think I'll wrap this up now because it's been going on for a bit long, but uh, there'll be more videos in this series because I think they pose an awful lot of questions about what decentralization can and cannot achieve, particularly when it comes to the optimism expressed by people who are very pro-decentralization. I hope you found that interesting and hopefully it shed more light on the point that I was trying to make before and I'll see you all in the next video soon. Bye for now.